Hello, I am Glenn Hall, and this is September 9th, 2019. And this is part seven of my series called The Mystery of the Beast. Today's video is called Parables of the Beast. If you have not watched part three of this series, you need to because it's very important that we understand how the Bible uses parables and that the Bible uses parables all the time. <clears throat> Jesus said, or I should say that the scripture says that Jesus said nothing unless he spoke in a parable. So everything that Jesus said to people was concealed. And there are verses that describe um, that concealing of scripture. And it's a very important property of the scriptures. One of the things, in fact, that proves uh, that the scriptures were written by God because most people cannot understand the scriptures. You can only understand them one way, and that's if the one who wrote them, the one who said them, namely the word of God, Jesus himself, only if he reveals them to you, only if Jesus reveals the meaning of the scripture, the meaning of the parable, can we understand it. So we're going to spend probably more than just one video discussing the parable or the parables of the beast. Today we're going to start with Daniel chapter 4. King Nebuchadnezzar, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion endures from generation to generation. You know, that's an astounding statement from Nebuchadnezzar, because Nebuchadnezzar is the king who came against and who destroyed Jerusalem around 600 BC, just utterly destroyed Jerusalem over a period of years. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. He is the most famous and greatest of the kings of Babylon. <clears throat> and here we have Nebuchadnezzar beginning a letter to all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. This is a message for all mankind. And it's a message that lifts up the Most High God and proclaims His glory. So now he's going to describe how he came to being at this place in his life where he would do such a thing. Because believe me, he did not start as a believer in God. When he, for example, destroyed Jerusalem, he was not doing it as a willing servant of the Most High God, even though he was, in fact, doing the will of the Most High God. So he begins in verse 4. Daniel 4, verse 4. I, <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and prospering in my palace. I saw a dream that made me afraid. As I lay in bed, the fancies and the visions of my head alarmed me. So I made a decree that all the wise men of Babylon should be brought before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers came in, and I told them the dream, but they cannot make known to me its interpretation. At last, Daniel came in before me, he who was named Belteshazzar, after the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And I told him the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, 
Because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you and that no mystery is too difficult for you, tell me the visions of my dream that I saw and their interpretation. The visions in my head as I lay in my bed were these. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong and its top reached to heaven and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it and the birds of the heavens lived in its branches and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head as I lay in bed and behold a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. He proclaimed aloud and said thus, chop down the tree and lop off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts flee from under it and the birds from its branches. But leave the stump of its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his mind be changed from a man's, and let a beast's mind be given to him. <clears throat> and let seven periods of time pass over him. The sentence is by the decree of the watchers, the decision by the word of the holy ones to the end that the living may know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will and sets over it the lowliest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, saw. And you, O Belteshazzar, tell me the interpretation because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Nebuchadnezzar had already told this dream to all of the wise men of his kingdom. Everyone who was considered to have the ability to interpret dreams. And no one could interpret it. And so he called for Daniel. So, in verse 19, <clears throat> Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was dismayed for a while, and his thoughts alarmed him. The king answered and said, Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belteshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you, and its interpretation for your enemies. I want to stop there because this is a very, very important point that we need to see and understand as we go on into the mystery of the beast. <clears throat> God is going to reveal something very startling to Daniel now. And Daniel actually wants to spare King Nebuchadnezzar what he's going to have to tell him. Because he esteems, he greatly esteems King Nebuchadnezzar. Now Daniel was brought to Babylon from Jerusalem when he was a youth. So Babylon is the <clears throat> the great commander, the great king, who destroyed his nation, who destroyed the capital of his nation, who destroyed the temple of his God. And yet here is Daniel, who is showing great esteem and great respect to Nebuchadnezzar. So mark that and keep that in your mind. Then he starts to interpret in verse 20. <clears throat> the tree you saw, which grew and became strong, so that its top reached 
to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth, whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant, and in which was food for all, under which beasts of the field found shade, and in whose branches the birds of the heavens lived. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong. Your greatness has grown and reaches to heaven, and your dominion to the ends of the earth. And because the king saw a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump of its roots in the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, and let him be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven periods of time pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. It is a decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king, that you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven, and seven times, seven periods of time, shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. And as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed and there may per perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. Verse 28. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. <clears throat> At the end of 12 months, so he's had a full year now to take Daniel's advice. Before I go on reading this, though, I did want to mention this seven times when it's mentioned here. The general consensus is that this is referring to seven years. But I'll speak a little bit more about that at the end here. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? So, here is a man who takes all of the glory to himself. A man who believes that he is great. That he is the one. He is the one that matters, the only one that matters, the great one, the great Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 31, while the words were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven. O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men, and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men, and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. Verse 34. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. At the end of the days, that's marking time for us. It didn't say after seven times, or at the end of seven times, or at the end of seven years, or at the end of seven months, or at the end of seven weeks, or whatever. Obviously, it wasn't seven weeks because of the way 
that he looked <clears throat> with his hair so long and his fingernails so long. But at the end of days is a time marker. Think of it as prophesying the time we live in today. The end days, the last days. That's why this teaching is coming forth now. The mystery of the beast was never understood until now because it couldn't be. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, I, Nebuchadnezzar, who was made to appear and to act like a beast. I, the beast, Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the days, I, the beast, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my reason returned to me. This is a prophecy concerning the beast. This is a prophecy concerning mankind. For 6,000 years, mankind has been the beast of the earth. We are now entering into the 7,000 year period of time. Seven times have passed. I believe that's what it means prophetically when Nebuchadnezzar was told that he would eat <clears throat> like a beast for seven times until seven times had passed over him. It's dealing with the time we live in now. It's dealing with these last days. And in these last days, that which happened to Nebuchadnezzar in the natural is going to happen to the beast that is here on the earth now, which is all of mankind who have not yet overcome the beast. Now we will talk about overcoming the beast later. But the vast majority of mankind has not overcome the beast. The vast majority of mankind are not what the Bible calls overcomers. The time is coming and is now at hand. And that's why this understanding of the mystery of the beast is going forth. So again, starting at verse 34, at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven and my reason returned to me and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. His reason returned. Have you noticed how unreasonable most people are these days? You cannot reason with a beast. You cannot reason with a beast. For God's dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing. And he does according to his will among the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? So Nebuchadnezzar comes to his senses. And then what happens? At that same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my Lord sought me, and I was established in my kingdom. And still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, for all his works are right and his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. So Daniel chapter 4, the entire chapter is a parable of the beast. And the beast is man. Daniel chapter 4 is a parable that prophesies the time when the beast will finally come to its senses. 
It's talking about the time when mankind will finally come to his senses. Today, we see incredible lawlessness everywhere. But we are beginning to see an awakening even among people who are still living in incredible bondage and incredible sin. If you are not aware of it, <clears throat> I urge you to look into the walk away movement that was started by Brandon Straka. Brandon, um, so far as I know, is still a practicing homosexual. And he started the walk away movement about two years ago now, I believe. And um, he had always been a Democrat. But he realized that the Democrats and the left were all about control and all about an evil agenda. And so Brandon began the walk away movement with a very powerful video. And I believe I even have a copy of it somewhere on my YouTube channel because it is so powerful. And I myself have watched probably somewhere between 10 and 20 videos of people who have walked away from the Democrats since then. <clears throat> the stories are encouraging because what you're seeing is that people are awakening to the incredible evil that the Democrats and those aligned with them, including many Republicans who go under the tag of rhino, Republican in name only because they do not stand for any of the true Republican doctrines or tenets of justice and truth and righteousness. But people are awakening to the evil of that agenda, to the evil of the agenda that tried to establish a coup against President Trump and remove him from office. People are awakening to the agenda of people like Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and what they did. People are awakening to the evil agenda of George Bush and his father, H.W. Bush. People are awakening to the reality of our history, such as that our government played a large role in the 911 conspiracy, and then the conspiracy to hide the truth of it. So many people are awakening to the incredible lawlessness and the incredible evil <clears throat> that animates the political left, the Democrat Party, and many others, and they're leaving it. But they're leaving it still clinging to many of their sins. These people have made a transition from one entity, but they need now to continue making a transition. The transition is to overcome the beast. And we overcome the beast by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony of the Lamb and of His truth. <clears throat> There's a very important prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8. That says, To the law and to the testimony, if they will not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light 
in them. The only way that we will gain mastery over the beast is by the law and the testimony. We cannot be lawless and overcome the beast. We cannot obscure the testimony of Jesus Christ. We cannot obscure the testimony of the entire Bible and never overcome the beast. And yet the prophecy of Daniel chapter 4 is that the beast, after seven times, is going to be restored. That he's going to be, the beast is going to be saved. That's what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar praised the Most High God. He made the proclamation throughout the entire earth to every nation, to every people, and proclaimed the name of the Most High God. And that is what, ultimately, those who are now part of the beast are going to do. So even though there are people leaving the deep state, the Democrats, many are still holding on to their sins and are still part of the beast. The message that I am bringing is for spiritual understanding so that those of us who are involved with the Great Awakening, those who are involved with what Donald Trump is doing, his war, his storm against the deep state, will not be satisfied that someone has simply left the demonic deep state. No. We have to urge them on into the way of truth. We have to urge them on so that they too can overcome the beast. That is the message of the parables of the beast. The book of Daniel itself has several more parables of the beast that we will discuss. I encourage you to read all of the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation includes parables of the beast, so read all of the book of Revelation. And soon I will begin to describe and define the deep state in terms of what the Bible says it is. And soon I will reveal what Donald Trump's role with respect to that is. We are involved in enormous changes. And it's time for us to begin to understand the time that we live in. It's time for us to understand God's requirements for us and for others. Our own role in all of this, how we can help people leave the evil that they've always lived in and accepted as normal. We are living in exciting times. 